Yo, what's going on, guys? I am the Geek Slays, and today I want to break down what would be my perfect offseason for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, that starts with the first and most important thing. Cut, fire, and Donatel. Our defense was insanely bad. And while, yes, we did not have the correct personnel for the 4-3 scheme, Ed Donatel wants to run. He didn't try to fix it. Oh, Daniil Hunter doesn't do great as an outside linebacker edge rusher guy. Cause, and we keep having to drop him into coverage and it's awful. What should we do? Move him to a down defensive lineman. That would have been the smartest choice. But is Ed Donatel smart enough to do that? No. Oh, our zone coverage is constantly getting beat because our two best edge rushers aren't rushing. Let's not run man and let them rush. No, let's just keep doing the same thing. What we really need, I know KOC wants to stick with the 3-4. At least that's how it feels. You know who can run a really good 3-4? Uh, he's a current linebackers coach for the Steelers. Goes by the name of Brian Flores. That's my dream hire for the Vikings at defensive coordinator. Now I know in a year or two, he'll leave to go be a head coach. That's fine. That's fine. We'll find another DC then. Let's focus on now. And right now, Brian Flores is the best man for the job. Probably. So you hire Brian Flores. Free agency comes next. And the Vikings have a insane number of guys who are going to be free agents their contract expired already let me tell you those guys pat pete garrett bradbury greg joseph nick mullins chandon sullivan irv smith jonathan bullard austin schlotman andrew depoala alexander madison kairos tonga blake brandle ben ellison ollie udo chris boyd and bc johnson there are not a lot of names on that list that I think we should really worry about bringing back. Pat Pete is pretty old, and he wants to win, and I think we have hit the actual rebuilding part of our competitive rebuild. While we may still be, you know, a competitive and playoff team next year, we're not going to be a Super Bowl contender, and at the age of 33, Pat Pete wants to win a Super Bowl, so I think he's gone. Garrett Bradbury, while he did play okay for us, he's not big and strong enough to defend against those big defensive tackles. And if we're going to be paying you 10 to 15 mil a year, which is probably what he's going to expect, you're not, it, it's just not good enough for us. Like we watched you get bullied by Dexter Lawrence. Like I'm, I'm good there, homie. Greg Joseph, we can find a better kicker. Nick Mullins, he's a backup. Chandon Sullivan is a young corner, but, like, we have Cam Dantzler. We have Andrew Booth. We have a Caleb Evans. We're probably going to draft a guy. You still have a guy like Chris Boyd who you could bring back. Like, Sullivan, I just don't think really fits, especially the money again. I would rather go stick with even younger guys and let our current young guys just get more reps. Irv Smith, he's just gone. There's a reason we traded for TJ Hawkinson. Because Irv Smith wasn't that guy. Now, DePaula, maybe you can bring back because he's not going to be that much. He, he is a Pro Bowl long snapper. Alexander Madison's gone. Blake Brandle, I could see us bringing back. He was a good backup for us. Chris Boyd, I could see us bringing back. BC Johnson, maybe. Maybe you bring him back. But then there's this other list of guys. Dalvin Cook is probably getting traded. Adam Thielen is probably getting cut with a post-June 1 designation. Harrison Smith might get traded. Same with Zadarius and Daniil Hunter. Those guys are going to be on the block. Those guys are going to be guys who we will accept calls about. Right? There's So there's a lot of players on this team who are going to be on the move. Now, in free agency, I don't think the Vikings really have money to go, you know, to go get anybody, right? So, we're really going to have to work with the draft and work with trades. And the way I want to display this 
is by using Pro Football Focus's mock draft simulator for the Vikings, full seven round, blah, blah, blah. Use defaults. That's fine. Enter draft. So we can start the draft, pause the draft. That is the strangest order you could have went in. Miles Murphy to the Bears. Will Levis to the Texans. Tyree Wilson to the Cardinals. Like what? Okay. Either way, not important. What we do want to do, though, is offer trades. I think a team like, oh, man, Dalvin Cook is going to be the big one. I see a couple of options here. Um, realistically, I don't like that. What? Why is there no pick 31? Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's one of those things, right, where the sorry my brain just kind of exploded we ha you have to find a team who not only wants dalvin cook but is actually willing to move to grab him shouldn't the dolphins have a first round pick i'm so confused i know they forfeited their 20 their their pick but what about the niners pick oh i guess the bronco oh the bradley chubb trade okay Okay. See, the Dolphins was a team that, you know, you could consider. I'm trying to think of who else has the... G I could see the Chiefs maybe as that team. Like, the 30th over pick, the 30th overall pick. maybe but even then like they don't love it so it's it's tough there's got to be a trade for dalvin i'm just not exactly sure what it is like the bills first round pick and we'll throw in you know uh the 119th pick i don't want to throw in a third but you know Maybe you throw in your third and, you know, you get that extra first round pick and there are still other guys, right? Okay, so the first move of the draft that didn't really happen, but what I think would be a smart move for both teams is the Vikings sending Dalvin Cook and the 159th overall pick this year to Miami for the 77th and 237th picks in this draft. The Vikings are probably going to do a lot of trading down. We need a lot of talent. So, uh, we'll resume the draft and pause so we can, again, move on from a couple of our other players. And I think there's a world where Adam Thielen gets traded to Buffalo to pair back up with Diggs. The Bills' offensive weapons are not that good. I know Thielen's kind of washed. You know what the Bills need? A guy who's just able to get open and has good hands. Now, Diggs obviously can get open. But he's getting double and triple covered. Like, you can't have him be the... You need a real number two. Gabe Davis is too hit and miss, right? You trade Adam Thielen in the 215th overall pick to the Bills... For the 93rd pick and the 246th pick. Now, this is all stuff I think happens before draft night. That's why we're doing it before the Bears have made a pick. Like, there's even a world, right? This is going to sound very weird. But there is a world where Kirk Cousins gets traded to, like, the Jets or the Raiders. Like, they panic early in this draft and like oh god we don't have a qb maybe we trade for kirk cousins i don't think that's likely but if we're doing my dream off season something like this where 
let's see how that one is. You know, something something where the Vikings end up with a decent pick from a team that is really quarterback needy and really wants to make a drive. That's why I say it has to be the Raiders or the Jets in a world where they don't get anything. But if there's no deal on the table, there's no deal on the table, and I don't think you try to force it. I really don't. If nothing's there, nothing's there. Now, another guy who could be on the move is Harrison Smith. Um, I'm not really sure what team would need Harrison. Like, I love Harry the Hitman. He's one of my favorite players in the sport. But first of all, who's going to trade for you? Second of all, even after they trade for you, what are you really getting out of it? It's going to have to be a contending team, obviously. Like, the Patriots are a team I could see doing it, but there's also the age factor, and that does matter. So I'm not really sure who makes the move for Harry the Hitman. I'm just saying it could happen. Um, You know, in a perfect world, you know, maybe it's trying to think of who, again, could really use a safety. You know, maybe, maybe... Let's just say it is the Patriots. They're going to give us uh, maybe not the Patriots. Um, Maybe a team like the Browns, right? Their their team is not perfect, obviously. And, you know, maybe they call up the Vikings, say, hey, our secondary sucks. For Harrison Smith, we'll give you the 99th overall pick and the 234th. And I don't think you can say no to that if you're Minnesota. I really don't. Again, it's all about the stockpiling of these picks here. So, boom, you've moved on from Harrison Smith. Realistically, Eric Kendricks is another guy who could... I think the odds for him are probably more likely that he gets cut than getting traded. So, But there is a world. But Daniil Hunter is another big one. Again, the issue is finding a team that needs an edge rusher which everybody needs edge rushers, don't get me wrong, but not only a team that needs the edge rusher, but, like, it would be willing to move on from, you know, whoever they have. Like, there might be a world where the Giants are that team, right? They call up, they say, you know, we've got the eight, the maybe it's the 57th overall pick. You give us... Daniil Hunter and the 119th overall pick, right? And we go, okay, obviously. Um, And finally, if all of those guys have been moved, Big Z will be another guy who is on the move. I could see a team like the Ravens calling about Big Z, get Zadarius back in Baltimore, And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the 125th overall pick from the Ravens. And there we, I mean, again, unless we want to just say in a perfect world, we also trade EK or Jordan Hicks would be interesting, but eh, I don't know who's going to want him. But with EK, right, that one is entirely a world where somebody could trade for him. You know, there's a lot of teams that need, you know, defensive guys. Like the Chargers linebackers stink. You get 100%. I could see this. The 85th pick for EK, I could see it. Now we're going to resume the draft, skip to our pick, and start making, making our plans here. Jalen Carter goes first overall to the Bears. Bryce Young to the Texans, Will Anderson to the Cardinals, Will Levis to the Colts, Brian Breesey to the Seahawks, CJ Stroud to the Lions, Anthony Richardson to the Raiders. I I don't know about any of that, but but here we go. We got our first pick, and man, I duh. This team needs so much that there is again a world where we trade back. Like there really is. Um You know, the Eagles want the pick. So I could see us saying, all right, you can have pick 23 for 31, 95, and 248. Cool. 
because that just gives us the chance to get more talent on this team. We can resume the draft, let it go. The Eagles use our pick to take Broderick Jones at tackle, which tracks. Joey Porter goes off the board and Osiris Torrance, which does suck. Those were both guys I would have liked to have picked. Now, having the last pick in the first round, knowing QB is an idea, it wouldn't be the worst choice to take Hendon Hooker here, but it's also not the best choice to take Hendon Hooker here, if that makes sense. Tanner McKee definitely isn't the guy. I absolutely hate how PFF does this sometimes, man. But there's also a world where... No, there's not. I don't think Kwesi would trade out of it twice. I really don't. Um, Wide receivers. I mean, Jalen Hyatt's there, which I can see the Vikings doing. You take Jalen Hyatt at pick 31. You move on to pick 57, where you then take Hendon Hooker. You're, you're pairing the college guy up with the with the team, right? But now it's all about the rest of the team because this is not perfect. And I'm guessing now that the center I wanted got picked much earlier. Where is he? The center from John Michael Schmitz went before our second pick. That sucks because he was one of the guys I really, really wanted. Um, which just means we're going to look at some other things, obviously. I can see in the third round us going Chris Smith to replace Harrison Smith. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of needs for this team. Jacqueline Roy at pick 85 is insane. So sure. The same thing. Ooh, with Noah Sewell being on the board still at 87. Give me Noah for sure. But even just with those guys drafted, there are still like some of the guys who fell this far in the draft. It's it's just shocking to me. But then I think you could go, I think then taking Luke Whipler out of Ohio State would be huge for us. Along with, if you can do it, because Whipler in a lot of places is listed as a guard, you can then take, I don't know how to say his name, but the center out of Michigan, I think that would fix a couple really big problems for this team. Now, again, we did move on from our best edge rushers this in this world, at least. So getting a guy like Nick Herbig could be great. Then here we are in the fourth round. Still, I could see Zach Pickens is maybe a guy. Caillou Blue Kelly is a nice player. But I think there is another position where we have to replace some guys. And that's still, I think, oh man, I think, yeah. At pick 125, you take Caillou Blue Kelly. You need another good corner on this team. So we will take that. In the sixth round, you go. You got to find the guy to replace Dalvin Cook. I know it, you waited a long time, but Mo Ibrahim can come in along with Kenny Nwongwu and Ty Chandler and have a really nice little backfield there. And then... You know, you still have a ton of needs. You can take D. Winters, another linebacker, because you got to try to find the guy to replace E.K. While you have Brian Osamoa. Uh, then, you know, there's a world where we cut C.J. Ham and find a replacement like Hunter Lupke. There's also a world where, you know, you try to find another guard that can maybe replace Ed Ingram which you would hope wouldn't be that hard, but you never really know, you know? So I think maybe you take Anthony Bradford here, you know, replace him with a guy from the school he went to. Haha, ha, that's kind of funny. 
And then, you know, you take a you take a Teron Vincent out of Ohio State. You know, maybe you draft a, a kicker like Jake Moody out of Michigan because, you know, you don't want to run it back with Greg Joseph. At least I don't want to. You take Cameron Mitchell, the corner out of Northwestern. And there you go. I mean, the back end of that draft isn't going to be guys who are probably starters outside of maybe Mo Ibrahim. But Jalen Hyatt and Hendon Hooker, you are you needed another a, a real number two. Or even if he turns out to be a number three and KJ moves to the number two. Jalen Hyatt is an actual weapon who can actually make moves and actually be good for us. Hendon Hooker, he's going to sit behind Cuzzo for a year, learn how to play, and boom, you've got your young QB on the cheap contract. Though he won't be that young, I still think Hendon Hooker is a guy that the Vikings would take. Christopher Smith is a good safety. He can replace Harrison Smith. And then you have Lewis Seen and Christopher Smith, Georgia guys running it for you in Minnesota. Jacqueline Roy would be may, hopefully a good replacement for Dalvin Tomlinson. Hopefully Noah Sewell can be your replacement for um, Eric Kendricks. Luke Whipler, like, this isn't... If you wanted to see the dream, right? Let me... This would be the dream based on how PFF does it. Let me show you my perfect draft for the Vikings though. So this right here would be my dream draft class. Like I said, my dream, the Jets panic, don't get Brady, don't get Garoppolo, don't get Carr. They panic, they call Minnesota and say, give us Kirk and that Lions pick you got and we'll give you the 13th pick. With that, we get a real second weapon at receiver in Jackson Smith and Jigba. With our own first round pick, we take Osiris Torrance, the guard out of Florida. In the second round, we trade Dalvin Cook to the Dolphins for their second round pick and take John Michael Schmitz to solve the center position. Then we trade Eric Kendricks in a sixth to the Bills, or to the Chiefs, excuse me. Uh, and use that immediately to replace Kendricks with Noah Sewell. With our own third round pick, we take Christopher Smith to replace Harrison Smith, obviously. Then we trade Adam Thielen to the Bills for a third round pick that turns into Isaiah Foskey. Uh, we trade Harrison Smith to the Patriots for a third round pick that results in being Zach Pickens. You trade Zadarius Smith to the Browns, also for a third-round pick. You use that pick to take Clark Phillips, corner out of Utah. Then you trade Jordan Hicks for a fifth-round pick to the Bills for Eric Gray, running back out of Oklahoma. And then with our final three picks, we take Henry Toa Oto, Mo Ibrahim, and then Max Dugan, mostly because once you get rid of Kirk, you're going to have to Go find a veteran like a Jacoby Brissett, like a Teddy Bridgewater to be your bridge QB. You take Max Dugan, you take a flyer on a guy. Uh, you know, I don't think he'll actually fall to the seventh round, but PFF's mock draft simulator right now is a little broken. A lot of these guys I don't think will be available when they were. But in a perfect world, this would be the infusion. In a perfect world, we'd actually end up with Anthony Richardson here at the 13th pick. But they have him getting drafted in the top five from PFF for some reason. So based off of what the mock draft simulator would allow, it's this. If we could get um, Anthony Richardson, basically the only thing would change. We wouldn't get in Jigba. And then we wouldn't take a receiver probably at all this draft. Try to fix everything else. That is the only thing I'd change. Because if you could get Richardson, we can rock with KJ Osborne. And, you know, maybe a switch out Foskey for somebody or Pickens for somebody. Or somebody down here, you take a flyer on a receiver. But this would be my ideal draft. Again, just with the only switch being in Jigba for Anthony Richardson. But if you did that, you could then go, you could, you know, 
depending on when you do these trades, if you try to do them early on in this offseason, you can make a whole bunch of things happen. But realistically, the first draft we did is more accurate. There's still going to be a lot of trades. The Vikings are going to trade down a ton. They're going to trade veterans for picks. I'm telling you this now. Quessy's very analytical. We are very old, very slow, and cost a lot of money. Quessy doesn't want that. A lot of these guys are gone. My hope out of all the guys I've mentioned, the only one that I really hope stays is Daniil Hunter. Like, Daniil Hunter, and then you get an Isaiah Foskey, and you still have Patrick Jones and DJ Wanham. Those are good edge rushers. Now, I would prefer to move Daniil as a down defensive lineman, but we'll see. But yeah, this would be my version of the perfect Vikings draft. You fix the interior O-line, you add a bunch of youth infusion to the defense, and then at the end, you get my two favorite running backs in this class. Not the two best, but my personal favorites. Eric Gray, you get kind of a power back. Mo Ibrahim, you get more of the speed guy. You still have Ty Chandler. You still have Kenny Nwongwu. You can really go like a full running back by committee kind of. But both Eric Gray and Mo Ibrahim, those are your replacements for Madison and Cook. Gray replaces Madison. Ibrahim replaces Cook. And then you just have Chandler and Nwongwu who can do stuff. You know, and free agency is tough. We don't have a ton of money. And there's not a ton of free agents that are like, really good in the positions that we really need like instead of taking mo ibrahim like do you go sign a running back but also like they're expensive to sign unless you want to go get somebody who's really not that good and at that point just draft a guy for a wide receiver though uh, the real wide receiver too instead of going in jigba you can get anthony richardson and you can go out and sign a guy like dj chark who's not going to command a ton of money you could go get a guy, you know, I think Juju is too expensive for our blood. But there, there's a few other guys out there, you know, maybe a McCole Hardman just because he's so different than JJ, which realistically would make KJ the wide receiver two, McCole the three. But it would add a dimension to this offense that we don't currently have, you know. A guy like either of those two makes sense. Keeping BC and going with McColl would be a great choice. But yeah, DJ Chark could be a replacement. You know, the the real place where we have to draft guys is the O-line. There are not great guards and centers in free agency, especially at a young enough point where you'd want them. We're trying to infuse youth. We don't want to bring in Jason Kelsey. I'm not saying he'd leave the Eagles, but you, you know what I mean. Like, a guy like that, it just doesn't make sense. And, like, maybe you bring back Bradbury if the price is right. But will it be? I don't know. You know, and then for for edge rushers, if you do end up moving off Big Z just because of his age, maybe you keep him. I don't know. But do we have the money to go sign a Marcus Davenport? I don't know. For defensive tackles, you know, the dream at D-tackle would be to go sign Deron Payne. We don't have the money to sign Deron Payne. If we do, do everything we can, throw the house at him, because that would be amazing. He'd be a great three-tech for this team especially since you'd keep Harrison Phillips and if you moved Daniil down to the line, that would be a great defensive line. You know, you're letting DJ Wanham and Patrick Jones take over the edge rushers again unless you draft somebody. And then, you know, it that would be a move I could accept. I, I would love Deron Payne. That would be so great. Will we get it? Probably not. You know, maybe you spend the money on him instead of, you know, re-upping Dalvin Tomlinson. But again, we'd have to get a bunch of guys traded and free up a bunch of cap first. Um, and then for like rushing linebackers, O'Shane Zimenez maybe isn't that bad of a choice. But like, like I said, there's just not a ton of dudes. Um, 
you know, Devin Bush and Tremaine Edmonds as two guys to look at to replace EK could be huge. Those are young dudes who are really good. I would take either of them as our EK replacement. In the secondary, you know, a corner to replace Pat Pete, right? That's really what we need. But for young guys like Trayvon Mullen and Greedy Williams are both interesting options, and I wouldn't be mad about it. Bringing Mike Hughes back would be a choice. Jamel Dean isn't a bad one, but after that, you're moving into older guys that I don't really know if you want to... Again, we're trying to get younger, not older. Um, and then the safety spot, like, to replace Harrison. I mean, there is a world you could go sign Chauncey Gardner-Johnson or, you know, Jesse Bates. But do you really want to put the money you free up right back into it? Now, in a cool world, you'd go get Terrell Edmonds and Tremaine Edmonds and pair the Edmonds brothers up on that defense. Again, both young, both good speed. Um, but I just, I think we're really going to focus through the draft just because cheaper players, you're building them for your team. You're picking guys who fit your squad and you don't have to pay them as much. That's just how I view it. I think we end up trading a lot of veteran guys and going mostly through the, through the draft, which is the best way to do it. The Kirk trade, I highly doubt it happens, but if it meant we got Anthony Richardson, I'd be down. Like, <laughs> I'd be so down because I don't see a world where we get him late in the draft. I don't think he can fall to 23. If he did, I'd love it, though. But there you have it. I think those would be my biggest dream moves of the offseason. And, man, I hope it all works out because I, I want to be in love with this team again. And while I love guy, the guys I talked about trading, they're old, they make a lot of money, and they just aren't performing at the level they used to. It's time to move on. I'd rather move on. Maybe with EK and Harrison Smith and Daniil and Big Z, maybe we are moving on a year too early. But I'd rather move on a year too early than a year too late. And I stand by that. So, yeah. Without further ado, I think that'll do it for me. Let me know what you think the Vikings should do down below. Let me know what you want your favorite team to do down below. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.